Hey everyone, David and Ivelisse, David and Ivelisse.com, and we're so excited today. We have a very special guest, uh, Dr. Sandy is here from Tucson, Arizona, and uh, Dr. Sandy has a, a PhD in molecular and cellular biology. She's worked as a research scientist at the university and government levels. She runs a practice, her own practice in Tucson, World Integrated Systems and Health, where she helps clients and their healthcare providers to understand how one's diet, nutrition, and lifestyle may be used effectively to balance blood chemistry, thereby addressing many health issues mm -hmm. without use of medication. So <laughs> cool, so cool. So we wanna ask you some questions. So Ivelisse, yeah. first question. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Sandy, can you briefly tell us your story? How did you come to choose blood chemistry analysis as your career? Uh, that's a, um, a big question. I'll try to keep it brief for you. Um, actually, my full name is Dr. Sandra Bavakwa, and I have, uh, I did get my PhD from University of Arizona, and um, then well, I was working in the cancer center there, and I went on to continue cancer research at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Uh, and while I was there, you know, the government does uh, uh, physicals on their scientists every so often. And I wasn't feeling well. I remember saying to my husband, I feel so bad. I feel like I'm going to die. And he said, go to the doctor. It's time for your physical anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I went and got, bl got blood chemistry taken. And I was called the next day. Doctor wants to see you today or tomorrow. And I said, well, it takes me three months to get an appointment. And, they, and I said, does it have to do with the blood chemistry that I just did? And they said, yes. Um, I said, well, can you repeat it? They said, we already did. So <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. So I went into the doctor's office. I got quickly sent to a specialist, and the specialist gave me less than a year to live. So I decided to get a second opinion, right? <laughs> Good idea. So I flew out to a specialist in L.A., big muckety-muck, um, great reputation, and short story is he gave me six months to live. And I told him I liked the first opinion better. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to find, and they, they were like, you know, we want you to take these medications, this one, this one, this, and this is for the rest of your life. And I said, you know, I have a PhD in molecular and cellular biology, and I'm fairly familiar with those medications and not quite certain that they're going to take care of these blood chemistry problems. What do you think? And the specialist in LA said, I have to agree with you. I don't think it'll be enough either. So whew, run, <laughs> don't walk. I flew back to Tucson and you have to understand I'm, I'm classically trained. I'm the daughter of a surgeon. I went back to my general practitioner who I trusted very much. And I said, do you have any other ideas? <laughs> and she said, let me make some phone calls. So that happened a couple of weeks later. She brought me back in and she starts talking to me about herbs and gooku lipids and uh, showed me four different programs. You know, Andy Wiles is doing this and this naturopath from Germany and blah, blah, blah. She gives me four programs. And I said, um, should I get a rattle? I mean, <laughs> that's not medicine. What's that going to do for me? She said, no, no, no. They're doing clinicals. This is really working for people. Um, so I... I said, well, which program? Do you know which one would work best for me with these problems? And she said, you're so bad. Do them all. You are a time bomb. There's no question about the fact that you're leaving. So I've had three physicians tell me that I'm leaving and I didn't feel real well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I had a history of immune system issues and cardiovascular and blah, blah. I had issues that, that had gone on, including 15 years of infertility. So I jumped into a world I knew nothing about and started to study nutrition and food sciences like a second PhD. Mm -hmm. And it, this is pre-dial-up, um, pre okay? So that meant international teleconferencing, mm -hmm. which is at that time was very, very expensive. I don't know if you can remember those I days. Remember. <laughs> it was really very expensive and I was getting putting these monstrous telephone bill, bills and my husband was going, oh my God, you know. And um, I 
started jumping into this world of doing these gray green shakes. And before people were doing that, it was like weird. My husband wouldn't come in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, it was kind of gross. And then, um, <laughs> and um, I ran into uh, someone that was very versed in nutrition. And she's like, I can help you. And she starts uh, talking about selling me stuff or your money back, right? And I said, who's going to get the money? You know, I'm right. going to leave. <laughs> so, but uh, there was a, a series of events, and it's a longer story, but what happened was I jumped into using nutritional supplementation. And within two and a half weeks, I had a major blood chemistry turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, within three months, my asthma and allergies were gone. Mm -hmm. And within actually less than six months, 15 years of infertility went away and I had a pregnancy for the first time in my 40s. Okay. Uh, that boy will be showing up here in my office shortly. He's now in his 20s. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so wow. Um, I just want you to know that I had a major change in my health and well being as a result of uh, a blood chemistry change that was uh, driven by nutrition and food supplementation. Okay. It was everybody noticed. And one of the reasons everybody noticed was as I got my health back, I dropped extra weight that I was holding. I dropped 65 pounds without thinking about it. And I was the person that had been on every diet in the world and it didn't work. Right. Okay. So I dropped 65 pounds. I had a very successful pregnancy. It was awesome. Okay. And it was a very, very life changing in many, many ways. So how did I get into blood chemistry? That's how. I had a, um, I was gifted a new life. That's what happened. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> well, you know, that's very interesting because uh, there's an ancient text that, and you may be familiar with that ancient text. It says life is in the blood. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Sold. So cool. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. So have you always been, uh, well, here's, I mean, we, you, we've got some of the answer to that question already. Have you always been a proponent of natural health solutions prior to, you know, this incident? No, no. I, I mean, like I said, daughter of a surgeon, I, I mean, as far as what I was taught, that all that natural stuff is witch doctor. I mean, that's, that's like, you know, get your rattle out, jump around. That's about as effective as any natural health solution. So no, how could I possibly have been? But what I can tell you is once, I, I mean, before the blood chemistry changed, my energy came up. I felt like a million bucks. I couldn't believe how I had energy as, I mean, here I was, I was in my forties and I developed more energy than I had as a 20 year old. And I'm going to tell you that it, uh, the, this approach um, was ad addressing issues that I had had probably from birth mm -hmm. or perhaps through genetics. It was, it was uh, touching on issues that um, were affecting me all of my life. Mm -hmm. And even now, I'm in my 60s and I have huge energy. I'm very physically active. I'm an extreme skier. I still am competitive with my horses. I'm a, like, you know, no, nothing's stopping me. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah I, I'm doing the math in my head and I'm just blown away. Uh, <laughs> you look fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I feel good too. <laughs> Honestly, I feel I have more energy now than I did in my 20s. Yeah. So for real. That's all. Um, so, you know, it took almost losing my life. Uh, to take on the understanding or the uh, any kind any kind of belief in uh, natural health solutions as something that I would ever allow into my own life or my family's life. Right. So yeah. So it takes a turnaround like that sometimes, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's it's almost I you know I do this for a living now, and when someone balances their blood chemistry, it can be magical. There, the, the turnaround, and I see this even with uh, people that are very, very ill, um, their energy will come back before the numbers change. Their energy, they will feel that. It's like, wow, you know, I've got more energy. I'm sleeping better. Um, this is 
really changing my life. And they'll do that before the results change, before the testing shows up. It's, it's really interesting, you know, depending on how profound the disease is. Sometimes it can take many months before the numbers start to change. But the person saying, but they feel better. And the doctor saying, oh, you're still going to die. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Right? Still got to work on this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't stop what you're wow, doing. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. At that point, they probably don't want to stop because they feel so good. So that mm -hmm. That's right. When people start feeling better, then they're getting, they, they're encouraged to uh, continue with what they're doing. And as the blood chemistry fine tunes, for me, it's like watching a flower blossom. Mm -hmm. It's really a beautiful thing. And I really, um, I love my work. I really do. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Well, mm -hmm. then that kind of goes into with um, the concept of life extension has become <laughs> more prominent in the past few years. Um, is this an area that you have some experience with? Um, you told us the story earlier about that um, and that you have a lot of interest in. A lot of interest. Yes. Um, gee, uh, should I talk about that person? Actually, there's so many that I could mention, but I do have clients that are in you know, well over a hundred and doing very, very well. And the lady that I had mentioned to you earlier, um, she, I started working with her when she was 92 and she had been in a wheelchair for eight years at that time and was in a nursing home and was not able to care for herself, mm. um, was very, very weak and had very profound, uh, um, joint and inflammatory issues and such. And now she's 104 and I just saw her this morning. I, I was out riding my, my stallion and um, who's very sweet. He's, he's a great guy. And uh, I was going down the trail and there she is. And you know, it's, it's interesting when, I didn't tell you this part. When she first started getting better and we uh, had her on, you know, some supplementation that was really helping her get flexibility and healing in her joints, right? And so she got out of her wheelchair and she, she was really proud, so proud that she was out of her wheelchair and walking with a wheelie walker, that she came into my office with these really short shorts on to yeah. show, me, show me the muscles in her legs, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is cool. And she's like, look at the muscles in my legs. I wanted to show you this. And then the next time I saw her for a follow-up, she did the same thing, but she was with a walker and, or with a cane. And she said she had gotten rid of the wheelchair completely. Um, and now she walks every single day. And oftentimes I'll see her up in the, in the hills behind my home, behind our ranch. She'll, she'll be up there hiking. She doesn't go fast, but she's consistent. She, and she goes miles. She walks every single day. And she gardens. She's having a great life. And she started a business. Yep. So she, <laughs> she, uh, she's helping other people her, like in her age bracket with their health and well-being. Uh, she's, she actually is kind of doing something similar to what the two of you are doing, um, which is, you know, kind of being a lifestyle coach for that particular population. Mm -hmm. And she's awesome. She's very, very, uh, um, she's passionate about it, like you two are. And um, yeah, I, I really love that. And she's how old now? She's 104, and she's a contributing taxpayer in this country, all right? So go yeah. USA. <laughs> now, what about, um, can you tell us about any of the latest developments in life extension? Well, latest developments. Mm -hmm. I, could, I could touch on that from two different aspects. One is there is a tremendous amount of research going on right now that is teaching us uh, different aspects of how our body works that is blowing everybody away. For instance, we now know that the, um, the layers of mucosa in our body all have kind of, like a mucus layer, much like the mucus layer that's in your... Um, in your garbage disposal, if you, if you don't wash it, really scrub it well, it'll get like a little mucusy in there, anywhere where it gets wet. Mm -hmm. So along, I mean, if you feel in your mouth, all throughout your whole GI system, and now it turns out every basement membrane in the body, which means every blood vessel, um, your heart, your brain, liver, kidneys, everywhere, there is no compartment of your body that doesn't have a layer of mucus, whether it be very, very thin or thicker, that has like an apartment building of different species of bacteria that live 
in that mucus layer, and that's called biofilm. And the biofilm has now been named the newest organ of the human body. Okay, and so I go into some of these GI um, uh, health or GI uh, uh, conferences, and you know, the gastroenterologists are walking around on Sunday afternoon going, oh my God, you know, everything I'm doing is wrong. This is like, the, <laughs> every, my, this is changing my entire practice. It's putting everybody on their head. Um, so we now know, like a few years ago, we thought that an anaerobic or a bacterium that grows without air right. was a disease causing bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now it turns out that 90% of the healthy bacteria in our body is anaerobic. What? And the, there's, uh, there's another class of life besides for eukaryotes and prokaryotes. They're called archibacteria. I'm just giving you little snippets. Wow. Archibacteria, were the, that's the kind of thing that lives in the 3,500 degree vents down at the bottom of the ocean okay. in extreme uh, environments. And um, years ago, actually, I'm going to credit myself. I'm going to stroke my back one time. And that is, I, I wrote that archibacteria at one point or another, and I didn't know if it would happen in my lifetime, will be found in the human body because there are micro environments that are very extreme. And these, these type of lo this life is very different than anything else. Um, and we're going to find it in the human body. And like just Last year and the year before, archibacteria have been found in the biofilm of our arteries because of the extreme shear of the rapid blood moving. So this completely changes our whole idea of how the human body exists. And in that layer, there's bacteria that like to live on the top, on the middle, on the bottom, right? And they actually, we can see they're growing little microtubules. And when we get stressed out, or have hormonal changes, they send little signals to each other. And sometimes they will um, not only send signals through these microtubules, but individuals of one colony will go and visit another colony and go back. And so we have interspecies communication happening on the surfaces in our body that has to do with our health and well being. Wow. What? Wow. Is that sci-fi? Yeah. That, yeah. Right? <laughs> and so getting um, the, these biofilms to be very healthy has a profound effect on our health. Profound effect. So um, that's one piece. We're also learning tremendous amounts about hormones and how they interact with our tissues mm -hmm. and how hormone balancing is profound for our health and well-being. In fact, I'm doing a class right now. I, I just started a group, it's Dr. Sandy's hormone balancing class, and that's uh, for people that want to, you know, uh, learn more about that so that they can maybe help themselves or family members, that sort of a thing. And it's uh, the, the, the effects on people's mental health and physical health on balancing blood chemistry, including balancing hormones, is stunning. Okay, so these are some of the, the things that are of interest and are exciting right now. And all of those things that I just talked about, the biofilm and the, um, and the hormones, are deeply affected by everything we eat, mm -hmm. by everything we put in our body, our nutrition, the food that we take in, our lifestyle. It, it has a, um, a downstream effect on all of these. So this is some of the new science, okay? I'm just giving you like a little tiny bit. Right. Um, but also, so that's one piece is like in general, how do we see the human body? Mm -hmm. And that there's profound changes in how we understand the human body. But in my practice, every single person is different. Every person is an individual. Mm. And my passion is in finding that individual need. Like, what is it that's different about this? Because everybody's genetics is different. Everybody's, uh, you know, the events that have happened in our lives are different. Yeah. So you can take twins and they have, you know, by the time they're 20 years old, their bodies can be incredibly different from each other and their blood chemistry can be very different. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it kind of tickles me <laughs> to fine tune people back to great health. So sometimes I work with athletes that are, they're really healthy. They're super healthy, mm -hmm. but they're looking to fine tune that blood chemistry and get the best out of their body. And that's exciting. Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
you know, sometimes it's very exciting just to help someone who uh, has been told they have very little time to live or they have, you know, they, they have goals that they haven't met yet in their life. They know why they're here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm reminded of one lady. Um, she was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer that was very aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I know that people that really want to be here on this earth are more likely to survive than those that you know, if I ask somebody, you know, why are you here? And they say, well, I just want a little bit more time with my grandchildren. It's like, well, you've got that. Maybe they need to be referred. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but when somebody like this lady said to me, I said, what are your goals? Because that's part of how you stay well. And she said, she said, I have designed the dress that I'm going to wear at my daughter's wedding. I knew she was kind of young. I said, how old's your daughter? She said, four. Okay. So yeah. she's strong intention to be here. And one man, he had cancer from head to toe. And I, I asked him, you know, why are you here? He said, let me tell you something. He, he talked to me like this. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, let me tell you this. He said, uh, there's a mural here in Chicago that's only half done. And I'm the only person on this earth that can see every brushstroke of how to finish it. So these are the people that get well, yes, right? Um, and they're the people that will do the steps and, do, and, and take the steps mm -hmm. to make whatever needs to happen to get better. And that's very, very gratifying for me. How does that, that's a dis discovery. Find that if you're still breathing, if your heart's still going, you can actually heal. Right. Or you can decide to leave. That's one of the options too. So, um, and it's, uh, but it's very, you see that that is a discovery too of life extension. Oh, and, and one more thing on life extension. Let's say somebody's got a really strong genetic uh, predisposition for cardiovascular disease or cancer or whatever, you know, diabetes. And they, um, and we know that. We know that they have a predisposition. Maybe their blood chemistry is already starting to go that way. And if we back off from that mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen, their life just got longer because if you take the, the one that's number one on the list, mm -hmm. now you're going down to number two. It's going to take longer to hit. So, <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you can avoid the thing that you're most likely to die of, then that is life extension. Right. So that's kind of, from my point of view, that's sort of part of my philosophy. It's like, let's find out, let's find out our top three contenders. Right. What's, go what's going to take you out? Because we're all terminal, right. you know, right. we're all going to leave. What's going to take you? I don't know. Let's go figure that out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's uh, turn the topic to nutritional, nutritional supplements. We understand that you do recommend nutritional supplements to your clients. Um, but we also know that um, there are a lot of bad uh, supplements or ineffective supplements in the marketplace. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Are people generally, are they wasting their money by buying nutritional supplements? Absolutely. People waste their money all the time on nutri nutritional supplements, bad nutritional supplements. There are, I'm going to say, uh, about 100 new startup nutritional supplementation companies every year. And, you know, tell me something. How many of those companies do you think have the money to do really great uh, uh, testing, uh, quality control testing? how many of them are willing to do it? Now, I, I mean, uh, you have to understand, I travel the country, I do a lot of lecturing on blood chemistry balancing, hormone balancing, we, I do a lot of GI conferences as well, so my piece is to take the biochemistry piece and speak to that. Mm -hmm. And as I travel around, I always see what nutritional companies are in that area, and, it's, and I get I get solicited to by many, many companies. Okay, companies want me to be speaking about their products. And so I will go and look and see what is their quality control. And there are companies that I won't step in because they're, my first question is, do you do any quality control testing? Are you looking to see, are there any herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, E. coli, salmonella, you know, 
heavy metals, are you testing your products at all? Uh, and oftentimes the answer is the FDA doesn't re require that. Why would we do that? Or, you know, oftentimes the, the real problem is that they're so young as a company, mm -hmm. they don't have the, the facility or the, um, the capacity or the finances to do that quality control testing. Mm -hmm. So those companies are out. I will not touch anything of that caliber. And that's most of the products that are out there, the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, so any product that I recommend is going to be very highly uh, um, tested. Uh, we want products that are going to be you know, quality uh, and, and hopefully the best quality for a good price point. And that is important too, because people want, don't want to waste their money. Right. And, um, but I, for me, I'm all in about metrics. It's all about the numbers. I'll do the blood chemistry. What is the product that will bring those numbers back now because I want people to get well now, especially if they're really sick. Okay. If, if I don't have something that's going to turn them around really quick, I want the numbers to change right now as quickly as I can. Um, and that, and that makes the physician happy. And I have physicians that use my services and send their patients here because I'm getting those results. So they want, it's like, okay, here you go. This is a tough one. Here's all the blood chemistry, you know, <laughs> go. And I want to, and we use food, food supplementation, lifestyle, whatever it takes to make those numbers. It's not just getting the numbers back in the, the, um, the ranges. A lot of people look at the ranges and they say, if it's in the range and it's okay, that's not true. It's, we run a very complex analysis and the, the ratio of one number to another is oftentimes what is more important for bringing back health and getting rid of a diagnosis. Okay. You've got to get that, uh, those, those ratios to correct themselves. That's when the organs come back. That's when the person feels better and mental health comes back and these sorts of things. So I want products that are going to work really well. Quality control is very important. And if, I, if I'm helping someone and I can't know for certain that a product is not going to do harm, right? I mean, do no harm. That's what any, any provider is going to be well they should be in that space because they're you don't want to give somebody something and then they get sick in fact i'll tell you a really quick story this is what uh before i got into this before i got sick i i had some belly problems my, my stomach just didn't feel right and i went into a health food store and i got something that was for digestion okay it was just a product and uh said take you know, da, da, da. And somebody, it was because a friend of mine said, go over to the health food store and get this. You should try something natural. Well, here's really good reason why not to do a natural solution. This, this just made me even more uh, anti-natural solutions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I got this thing, took it, and that night I developed high fever, aches and pains, I vomited GI, it was bad, right? <laughs> That's yeah. why the sink is close to the toilet. And <laughs> it's like, okay, I was sick as a dog for a good 36 hours, like 24 hours, really bad. And I thought, God, what a terrible flu. So about two weeks later, my belly was bothering me again. <laughs> Went to took, take the thing again, sick as a dog. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Same thing. It was contaminated with salmonella. I got salmonella. And, and there was a study done not too long ago where they went into health food stores and just took products off the shelf just at, at random. And 37% of the products had salmonella and E. coli. That's all, the only two that they looked at was salmonella and E. coli. 37% of the products in the, in the, just across the country had salmonella and E. coli contamination. So it's not okay with me to say, yeah, just go to the health food store and go get something. You'll be fine. Not okay. Yeah. So any product that I look at has got to be tested for fungal contaminants, but bacterial contaminants and all kinds of toxins so that I know for certain that they're healthy. And I, I hope I didn't overdo that, but I'm sure that that answers your question, right? That was a great example. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, what, what kind of, um, if you can, if you're willing to speak to what kind of nutritional supplements do you, I mean, if so many of them are bad out there, what do you use? Well, okay, um, there's, there are a number of companies out there that are jumping through the hoops, um, and they generally are the older companies that have been around, the ones that are more established, that have been around, that they, they understand the importance. And sometimes it develop, uh, uh, the importance of quality control comes from the progenitor of that company. And uh, I, could, I could speak to a, a number of companies, but the one I would um, highlight for you is a company called Shackley. Shackley Corporation was started by Dr. Shackley, and he's actually the co-discoverer of the first vitamin that was uh, discovered, which is vitamin A, right? Not very original in naming it, but you know, it's okay. And, um, <laughs> and that was a very significant, actually in his writings, he spoke about uh, vital minerals, vital minerals that were in food, that if we didn't take them into our body, we would not be well. Though the word vitamin amongst five different scientists eventually became the word, you know, vital minerals became vitamin. Okay, so that was a coining of the, so this is how old this is, you know, this is old information and a, and a real progenitor of the nutrition, uh, um, what would I say, uh, the science of nutrition. And so uh, Shackley products, Dr. Shackley was really into purity and uh, Shackley products really do that that company jumps through the hoops and along with many other companies i've gone into the facility i've been in the research facility i've been in the production facility and you could uh, i mean it's it's completely sterile it's completely clean it's it, you can eat off of any surfaces not that they would let you but <laughs> it's it's an amazing high quality and there's i mean there's well over 540 tests on each product uh, they're, they're not just looking at the materials that are coming in. Actually, this is an interesting story. Uh, when I went to visit that company, I went into this facility that where all of the materials, like there's a building that's separate from the production okay. building. And, and it's got this team of women that are working there. And there was a woman that was deep in her 70s, super high energy, right? And uh, <laughs> she's kind of like a hero, uh, the heroine. And she was... Um, uh, she, her, their job is to uh, do the early testing on any of the base plant material to make sure that it's clean enough to go to the production facility. And they prided themselves, and this is kind of funny, they prided themselves in turning down about 70% of the material that came in their doors, okay? Yeah. And, um, and on, on another trip, I went and visited a company that provides herbs and to many companies. And they, um, the, and the owner of this company uh, was, and they, they bring in herbs from other countries as well as from this country. And I asked them, what do you think about working with Shackley Corporation? Or what, you know, what do you think about this company, this company? I mentioned the number. And they said, oh, Shackley. She said, we, we hate working with Shackley. And I said, why do you hate working with Shackley? She said, they turned down most of what we sent to them. And I said, well, what do you do with the material? She said, anybody else will take it. Uh, and I'm like, okay, good info. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and so I look for companies that are persnickety about their cleanliness uh, and, and really wanting to have super high efficacy. And as a result of that, I will mention to you, I mean, I've been on the science advisory boards of several companies, but I did do free work for Shackley Corporation uh, some years ago to help the company develop some of their products and that are still being used today and so that they were fine-tuned. So, and I've done this kind of work for some other companies as well. And, uh, and happily so. Uh, and there's other scientists like myself that are happy to don donate our time to help the, um, the formulations uh, so that uh, new science can be brought into uh, those products to make them as efficacious as is possible. They have to work. And so I love products that work better than any other product that I can find. Okay, so I'm always looking for that combination of products or that, uh, that individual product that's going to make this thing happen no matter what, 
or in this particular kind of person, these genetics, this, this is the product that I want. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've been putting together groupings of products for well over 20 years uh, that are very efficacious in balancing blood chemistry and bringing people back to good health. So I, I love doing that. I'm kind of nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> Love so, that. <laughs> so um yeah i just i don't know uh i, I hope that does that answer your question yes definitely. Yes. yeah and you know what i really i love your passion about nutrition you know the two of you are just really awesome and uh i i love the fact that there are people like yourselves out there that are out in the trenches and working with people and teaching people about their lifestyle and doing nutrition you know making nutritional choices and um actually have you talked to people about some of the things that you're doing i mean you're doing your newsletter is yeah, yeah. you know you want people I mean, I'm sure I'm sure people already know about oh. this, but if okay. it, you know if you're listening and you want to know more about what uh, Eva Lise and David are doing, um, you should go to their website. It's okay if I do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, go to David and Eva Lise and you got to look and see they're doing. Uh, they have a 2017 guide to natural health, um, which is really awesome. You can just click on a link in there and they have a really great newsletter. You just want to sign up to that newsletter and see some of the things that they're putting out. Because I like the fact that you're putting out very understandable information for people. You know, I'm, I'm here doing the science, okay? And you're out there in the trenches doing the kind of work that you're doing. And so I'm really passionate about um, really helping people like yourselves that are out there doing grassroots work and really taking care of people. So thank you. I, like I appreciate it. Work. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> grassroots work, isn't it? Uh, we so. have one, one more final question, then we'll let you go. Okay. Um, how would you rate the importance of lifestyle, such as diet, nutrition, exercise, um, versus a person's genetics uh, for the evaluation of one's overall health? Um, okay. The prediction of their future health. Um, wow, what an interesting question that is. Um, so since genetic profiling has recently become very readily available and, and affordable to most people, uh, I've become very interested and involved in the analysis of uh, the, like the genetic analysis of individuals and in some cases entire families. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at um, you know, particular genetic issues, maybe the interpretation of MTHFR genes or neurotransmitter uh, metabolism or detoxification mechanisms. And we're, um, and first of all, we know that uh, genetic abnormalities in these areas are amazingly com uh, common in our population. And so, uh, for an instance, uh, for instance, let's say a, uh, a person has a problem with liver detoxification. And liver detox has three different phases. So let's say they have a problem in the very beginning in phase one detoxification. And there's, um, like our body has many detoxification pathways. And so let's say they have one of those pathways is not working well because they're of their genetics. And there's maybe 10 steps in that process. Let's say they have a mutation at step three. Well, sometimes you can come in with like a certain herb or a nutritional approach that will help bring them into step six or seven and bypass the problem. And there you've got your detoxification happening again. And a disease can disappear as a result of them being able to get rid of a chemical that has built up in their body. Okay, so, so there's where genetics can be really awesome. And the interpretation of the genetics that we can have right now is complicated and will continue to develop and is, uh, is tricky. It's tricky to do. And there's a, there's a number of us out here that are really kind of interested in that and, uh, and jumping through the hoops to try to help people in that way. But I definitely, it's interesting, I have this one family I'm working with and uh, I had all four boys, okay? And one um, ha has all of the bad genes of both parents and two have some of the bad genes of both parents and one got all the good genes of both parents and be behaviorally and this is an mthfr issue and behaviorally you can 
predict from the genetics exactly the kind of grades that they get in school. Oh. Okay, because their ability to focus and and get work done in school is is correlatable to the genetics. So that being said, honestly, I mean, you're asking about lifestyle, nutrition, food. That really is about 75%. Okay. And, and I'll tell you, um, my guy, uh, Jack, has uh, a thick head of hair. I mean, I've got pretty thick hair. He's got a good thick head of hair. We make a good couple, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, and he has about every gene there is for baldness, okay? He's in his 60s. He's never going bald, okay? That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, it's really, the genetics is about 25% of outcome. Okay. So lifestyle is everything, really. And also, I run into this where people um, are doing fine. They have no problems whatsoever. And then they have a very stressful event. And there will be a genetic expression shift that will cause them to step into a disease like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And you've got to understand the genetics to be able to get this. But what happens is if you get stressed enough, a gene can be turned on and there's lifestyle changes that can happen that can turn it back off again. And so we can bring people out of a diagnosis by attending to the genetics, but it's done through lifestyle and nutrition. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So lifestyle nutrition is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Very right. important. So instead of the 80-20 rule, it's a 75-25 rule. <laughs> um, you know what? 80-20, 75-25, you know, depends on who you're talking to. But basically, let's, let's take it as this. It's, it's mostly lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Genetics is there. There's no question about the fact that it's a player. And they're interrelated. Lifestyle affects how our genetics are expressed. Right. Genes turn on and off by how we care for our body. They turn on and off by how well we can practice self-love. Mm -hmm. And self-love, um, I like to think of self-love as what mo most people think of as self-discipline. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we breathe deep air, you know, we get deep breath, we take water, we hydrate our bodies, we take in the best food that we can. These are acts of self-discipline. We exercise, we move our body, and, and so we stay healthy in this way. We practice uh, love, laughter, and tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, these are ways of uh, not just taking care of those around you, which we find easy to do, mm -hmm. um, but taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as we fill our cup with self-love, self-discipline, okay, then our cup runneth over mm -hmm. and we are able to give love and care to those around us. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'll speak to everyone that's out there caring for a lot of other people in their lives. You've got to care for yourself. You really do. You have Absolutely. to care for yourself. And that's how you go about caring for others. Because otherwise your cup is empty and you're barely existing. And that's how people get sick, right? right. That's how I got sick. I was, a, I was a government scientist and I was working myself to the bone. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always say you can have all the money in the world, but what good is it if you don't have your health? That's uh, it. Good wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> That's where our journey started. Yeah. Doctor so, Sarah, yeah, go, you go ahead and you want to say more. So what I wanted to say is, you know, I know that if you're out there watching and um, you you may be thinking of someone that needs to have a little bit of help that you might have uh, that might need to have some assistance. And so for your, for, for David and Eva Lisa's uh, population, if you mention their names or name, and I, I get to hear that then. Uh, and if you contact the office, I'm going to offer a free 15 minute consult. Um, and so if you know of someone that has interest, maybe we can get them just started in the right direction. Um, I, I would be very happy to help your population in that way. And so uh, sometimes it's just a little something or just a, a little hint that can be changed at home that can make all the difference in the world. Um, so if you have something that's going on or if you can think of someone that might be suffering that you know, someone in your family or a friend, um, don't hesitate to contact my office 
and um, I'm happy to help you, really. Uh, so uh, you can contact me um, by calling. The phone number is 520-743-0575, or you can email at uh, wish, that's W-I-S-H, the number two, at wish, the number four, life.com. That's wish two at wish for life.com. Okay, so happy to help. Yes. And uh, can call you and email you around the globe, correct? It doesn't around the globe, yes. You know, I care for people. Doy conferencias en español también. I can take care of people in English, usually, you know, English, Spanish, and French. Um, and I have an interpreter for Japanese. So, um, uh, happy to help in any way, but most it's amazing how many people around the world are speaking English these days. So, um, you know, English or Spanish is fine. Um, so, uh, and, and we can Skype or use phones. So if you need my Skype, just email and that that's fine. Happy to help. Ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And so there's a limited number of those free consults, but for people that call in, we'll, we'll do our best. And if you mention uh, David and Eva Lisa's name, then I'll be happy to uh, help you. Okay. Well, thank you. Dr. Sandra Bavakwa, thank you so much for your time today. It's yeah. been very, very uh, informative to say the <laughs> least. And um, so we just want to, Gosh, we want to be able to come back maybe down the road and, and get into some more detail if, you know, some other issues or we have some other questions, reach out to you. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that would be fine. I'm happy. I'm here to help you, honestly. Um, so just let me know. And you know what? When people are out there doing the kind of work that you two are doing, I, I do my best. I mean, you know that you're, you're not paying me to be here. I'm here to help you, and I'm very happy to do so. There's a lot of suffering out there, and, and the work that you're doing and the work that I'm doing can bring people back to their good health and well-being. And this is how we make people's lives, um, you know, how people have quality of life. Because, you know, we're not here for a long time. Life is short. And so if we can help people have high quality of life, that makes people's uh, dreams come true. Mm -hmm. And what else is there to do in this life? Right. Right. Exactly. And, and, you know, you have to understand I'm here on borrowed time. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I almost left. So I'm very, very clear about why I'm here and what I'm doing. And so I want to acknowledge the two of you. You're doing great work and just thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sandy. We're so, so honored to have you. <laughs> See you next time. Okay. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.